Good afternoon. Um, we're now in the uh, in the second week of, uh, of significant support to uh, the emergency management services, the surge, and uh, I've uh, been around the area over the last uh, couple of days, and I thought I'd take an opportunity just to talk about some of the things that I've seen um, out and about. So, uh, firstly, I went to Orbost in uh, Victoria. And uh, what I saw there were some very, very tired firefighters. And of course, we have a situation where um, norm, under normal circumstances, of which this is not, um, if there was a, a fire front, other firefighters from other areas would come in and support those firefighters. But of course, with the scale of the fires and the scale of the effort required, they're not getting that same uh, reinforcement. So when I spoke to the uh, to the leader of the uh, of the local firefighters, uh, he asked whether we would be able to provide uh, tree felling uh, support and also to uh, damp down areas and to look for little spot fires. And uh, and I said absolutely, and uh, and the look of absolute relief on his face um, was palpable. And I guess. Um, you know, that does speak volumes about how hard our emergency management services are working and, uh, and it is great that we can be there to support the great work they're doing. Um, I then went to East Sale uh, where I saw uh, people coming out of Malakuta and, uh, and there um, they, they came off a C-130 and um, they were put into what is a, a reception area. Now this reception area I thought was pretty remarkable. Uh, it has ADF personnel, but it has Red Cross people from the emergency management services, indeed a whole host of people who have never worked together, have pr probably never seen what a reception area should look like, but together as a team, they've formed this uh, wonderful place, this safe place for people, uh, and when they step off the plane, uh, they are provided with a surety that they'll have transport uh, with accommodation, and uh, they're provided with pastoral care if they need it. And uh, it, it just provides them with that, uh, I guess, assurance. And so it is wonderful to see how these teams can come together at a moment of crisis to make such a wonderful difference. I then visited Kangaroo Island and uh, there I saw no job was too big or too small for our Australian Defence Force personnel. Um, I heard stories of our soldiers, sailors, airmen and women being, uh, there was one who was a barista, a makeshift barista, because there was a, a flood of people from the emergency management services, um, people doing clerical duties who perhaps have not done clerical duties before, uh, soldiers erecting pens for uh, some wounded, uh, many wounded animals, and indeed it's, it's pretty tough conditions to see that and wonderful that, uh, that our people could make a difference. And, uh, and even putting up fencing um, to support our farmers where they've had fencing that has been burnt down, destroyed, uh, so that they can separate their livestock. And, uh, and also the wonderful work of the Australian Defence Force vets uh, working amongst other volunteer vets. And I've got to tell you, it is pretty trying conditions, very tough to see and very impressive, uh, impressive work being done. Uh, then I went to the Adelaide Hills where I saw an enthusiastic platoon of, of woodcutters. I'm not really sure if they were woodcutters before, but they're certainly woodcutters now. Uh, trained and doing great work. Their faces uh, charcoal black and smiling, but not smiling because of the circumstances, but smiling because they can be there to provide a, a helping hand. And, and I think they all feel like they're making a difference, which they are. Um, and then today I went on to the HMAS Adelaide uh, where I um, went out to, a, to a, a ship's company who were just so focused on the task. Of course, they just want to do more, uh, which, and you wouldn't want anything else. Um, interestingly, the pilot, uh, sorry, the, one of the load masters in the helicopter that flew us uh, to and from the uh, HMAS Adelaide, he himself had, had lost his property and uh, he said, uh, yeah, I've lost a property, but I really want to keep supporting. And, and I guess that's the sort of spirit you see across these affected areas. Um, I have seen the, uh, Singaporeans uh, who are um, obviously flying their, their Chinooks. Some of them could have taken leave, elected not to. Um, because they wanted to help the people that they've worked with before. So again, inspirational. And uh, our New Zealand contingent who were flying the helos, 
uh, recently supported uh, the tragedy at White Island, but again wanted to get back and wanted to provide support to us in our trying times. And I think um, as I went around the area, I asked many um, who was on leave uh, when, they were, when the call came and uh, many, many, many hands went up. And, uh, and that shows how much uh, and how focused people are to support. And it's, it's a wonderful part about the Australian Defence Force. Um, but behind all those people are families uh, affected and, uh, and they make sacrifices, but they do so willingly knowing um, that, their, that their loved ones will be supporting our eman emergency management services and importantly, our, uh, our entire community. Um, I thought today was a good point as well, 10 days in, to, uh, to provide some statistics. But when I provide the statistics, I, I guess I, I want you to understand that it doesn't tell half the story, maybe not even quarter of the story. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tasks going on every day by people who are just doing good and, and you would want nothing else. Um, so some of the statistics though that are of interest, we have 5,600 personnel within the Australian Defence Force who are currently working um, within uh, Operation Bushfire Assist. Um, but when I give you that number, uh, understand that the Australian Defence Force's main effort is providing this support and there are many others behind the scenes who don't come into those numbers who are doing much, um, much good in, uh, in Operation Bushfire Assist. We have 2,800 reservists. We have uh, 261 personnel from other countries, three ships, 19 helicopters. We have 12 aircraft. We have visited over 90 communities across our area of operations. We've accommodated 508 uh, evacuees in ADF uh, bases. We have lifted 4,300 and 83 personnel, now they are arranged between Australian Defence Force personnel, civilians and emergency management services. We have moved 182 pets and we have lifted 361 tonnes of cargo. Um, so we are so exceptionally proud of all the work that is being done, but again this work is being done to help support our fantastic emergency management services and the community. Um, so that is the end of my update. Uh, I would ask, are there any questions? Uh, does that 5,600 personnel include the 2,800 reserves? It does, absolutely, because it is one force. Um, whether you're part-time, whether you're full-time, uh, to be honest, it doesn't matter. You're providing um, the, the same service. Um, and as I've said before, um, that if I have a reservist, and a full-time individual standing one beside each other after 30 years of service, I still can't tell the difference. Um, is there any state breakdown with those numbers? Did we can certainly point? provide that and I'll give it to that on notice. Um, yesterday it was suggested that Defence were directly assisting in the evacuation of uh, civilians from Malakuta with, with armoured vehicles. I was wondering, I understand that's not actually the case. Can you kind of clear up what Defence's role is, is with those escorts? So what I can tell you is that we provided support to a fuel tanker coming in, providing urgent um, fuel resupply. We provided support to the uh, fire brigade assessors who were coming in to make assessment. Um, we have been doing also support, um, obviously the, the clearance of that road as well in, in terms of uh, support there and physically doing, uh, doing clearance. Um, and again, I highlight that um, there are just a myriad of tasks going on, many of them, many of them unseen to me as I would want, um, because my expectation is that people are just going and doing what they need to do. Do you have any estimate of the number of civilians on Malakuta today? Um, so the figure I got uh, several days ago, and, and I think it will be uh, slightly old now, um, from, the, uh, from the local police uh, chief uh, was uh, around about, uh, it was around about 1,200. All right, thank you very much.